Hi, my name is David McKittrick. I'm Outreach and Training Manager here at Blue Marble Geographics. And today I'm going to share a little bit of information about a very creative way that you can share some of the work that you do within Global Mapper with a wide audience. Uh, Global Mapper includes a number of different sharing uh, tools, yeah, allowing you to print maps, generate PDFs, etc. But I'm going to show you one very specific example of a way to share what you do within the application with a virtually unlimited audience. So here you can see on my screen, we have uh, some property data, um, just a little neighborhood. Uh, you'll note that my workspace is called neighborhood. Uh, we also have some fire, fire hydrants, and this may represent the culmination of some work that you've done within the application. Maybe you're doing some property mapping, maybe you're, you've done some field data collection to collect the location of fire hydrants. You now have those within the context of Global Mapper. I, I need to now share those. I need maybe to share them with the local residents. I need to share them with the folks in the town office or whomever it is that I'm working with. Now, again, there are a number of opportunities for sharing data. We could simply export these as a geospatial file uh, that could be used within another application or indeed used in another instance of Global Mapper. We could, as I mentioned, capture a PDF or even print this map. Uh, also, we have the option from the file me menu here, as you can see, of simply capturing those screen contents to an image. But as I said at the start, I'm gonna use something a little more creative as a mechanism for sharing my data. One of the supported file formats when it comes to both importing and exporting data from Global Mapper is KML or its partner KMZ. Now, KML stands for Keyhole Markup Language. Those of you who have been in the business for a while um, may recall that Keyhole was the precursor to what we now know as Google Maps, and the file format has been retained. Uh, Google Mapper allows you to export uh, any of your data in that format, and we're going to go through that process initially. Then I'm going to take the file that I generate and integrate it into a custom Google Maps map that I can then share with my constituents. So again, assuming all of the work that I needed to do has been completed within the application itself, I simply go to the file menu. I will go to the export submenu. I'm gonna to choose to export just my vector data. And I've got a couple of layers in here, my, my properties as well as my, uh, my fire hydrants. So choosing the uh, export uh, vector, or, or you can notice LiDAR is included in this format as well, or this uh, option as well. And I'm gonna choose specifically KML or KMZ, and you can choose either. We would usually recommend KMZ because it is the compressed version of that format. Um, we'll go ahead and click OK, and it will give me a few options to determine some of the structural characteristics of this file. You can see here at the top, for instance, the filled area translucency, whether we want our polygons to be opaque, or whether we want to see some of the underlying map data. I'm just going to leave that setting a little bit to the kind of a, the right side of kind of 50%. So it will be partially opaque. You'll see a little bit of the underlying map data through the uh, through my file, as you will see. We can choose to display labels, which I won't in this case. A few other options in here as well. A lot of the options you will note pertain to working with 3D data, not something that we're concerned with in this demo, but you can see those are options as well. I'm simply going to click OK to generate my file. I'm gonna drop it on my desktop. I've already done this once, I called it test. And just in the interest of the time here, I'm gonna replace that file with a new version. It's called test and we'll click save. And that will now then create, oh, confirming that that has been created. Uh, that will uh, simply create that external file that I can now use in either Google Earth or as you'll see in Google Maps. Now at this stage, I'm gonna transition away from Global Mapper. It served its function. I'm gonna bring up my browser and specifically I'm gonna bring up a version of Google Maps, which is called My Maps. If you haven't explored this, this is a way within your Google Maps uh, setup that you can customize a map. You can create your own, basically. Anybody who has a Google account can do exactly what I'm about to do right now. I'm just using my own personal account for this. As you can see, I've got the option to create a new map, which I'm gonna do right now. Um, it will initially give me the option, after I confirm the creation, uh, to determine the contents of this map. And obviously it starts with a, a blank slate. We've got the background here, the map of the US, as you can see, but I can uh, begin the process of adding data. And the easiest way for me to do that is to import a file. As you can see, it's even highlighting this on my screen. I wanna use this to import the file that I just exported from Global Mapper. So I'll choose that option. Um, I will browse to my desktop and hopefully find there the test KMZ file that I just created, I'll go ahead and open that. And that will populate my map automatically with the contents that I previously saw in Global Mapper, the contents that I had created, maybe edited in Global Mapper. Um, you'll even see the visual representation of my hydrants has been retained 
by this KML file or this KMZ file, and those are rendered in the application as well. Now, I'm going to take a quick journey back to Global Mapper so we can do a very quick visual comparison. This is my Global Mapper map. You can see the structure of my data. I'm back in Google and my, my maps in Google Maps, and you can see exactly the same information. One thing I didn't show in Google, um, um, Global Mapper is if I use my info tool and I select one of my properties, you can see I've got some information. I bring that up because if I go into my Google Maps map, I have the same tools available here, same property. We can get all of that information as well. So we have taken the, the work that we did in Global Mapper and made it available within this um, um, framework. Um, there's a few other administration tools you can apply here. Um, you can rename these layers. I think they come in with generic names, but we could name these to be properties and hydrants if we wanted to do that. You can also do a little bit of editing here as well, quite limited in its functionality, but that is definitely an option within this um, platform. We can also change the background map. Right now it's my street map. All the way at the bottom, I'm gonna choose a different base, base map here. I'm gonna choose my imagery, it might be a little more meaningful there. We can see the context of my data. And you'll note, by the way, that the polygons are semi-transparent as I set them up in the file. So this right now is, the same data now managed within my Google Maps environment. The final part of this workflow, the most kind of meaningful part is for me to set this up as something that can be seen by a wide audience. And I do that simply by sharing. There's a button right here in the Google Maps interface to share. Um, when I select that, when I click the button, I have the option to give this a name. It probably makes sense to call it something other than untitled maps. So I'll go ahead and change that. We'll call it hydrants, probably makes sense. And we'll click okay. And now you can see I have options to determine who has access to that. You can see my account is established here, but if I want anyone with the link to view this, I can simply enable that. And when I've done that, I now have access to the URL. This is now a outfacing website that I can share uh, with whoever I want, or indeed I can embed it on my custom website. I'm just gonna copy the URL just to prove that this works because to kind of validate the procedure, I'm going to bring up another browser window. In fact, I'm gonna bring up a completely different browser. I'm gonna bring up Firefox just to prove this works. My, my uh, Google account is not, not active in this uh, browser. But just to prove it works, I'm gonna paste what I just copied. With fingers crossed, you can now see an outfacing version of what five minutes ago was just a map that I created in Google Mapper. Now it's available to the public. Anybody who has that URL and maybe clickable from my website, can now access this data and again, select a property, get all the information, select one of the hydrants, they can get that information as well in here. So completely interactive map that's now available as a means to share, starting in Global Mapper, ultimately ending up with Google Maps. So one of the number of different ways that we can share data in uh, from Global Mapper, as we mentioned at the start, PDFs might be a good option. Certainly you can export files of different formats that can be used in other applications. But I think this idea of being able to share map data that ultimately ends up on an interactive website is a very, very effective way to share all the work that you're doing in the application. If you want more information on this or indeed on any of the other sharing options that you have available in Google Mapper, you can go to our knowledge base. If you have any questions about what I just did or indeed any functionality within the application, you can send an email to geohelp at bluemarblegeo.com. Thank you for watching.